Hey guys, it's Melanie Ham. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about quilting. We are on our series, Your First Quilt, and we are going to quilt this bad boy. Um, we're going to be using a walking foot. Now, I have done a ton of content on quilting, so you can check out my blog if you want to learn more. This video is meant for those of you that have never done a quilt before, and so I'm going to really pare down and simplify. Down below, I'm going to have a ton of links. So check there for more resources. I'm going to try to keep this video brief. Um, but a walking foot is great. Just make sure that it is the one that will fit your sewing machine, whatever sewing machine you have. Now what a walking foot does is it feeds a project that is multiple layers through the machine at a more even pace. So it has these little feet that help with the top layers of the, the quilt. So this isn't just for quilting, although it's primarily used for that. If you're sewing anything with multiple layers, this is gonna be something that you wanna use, even bags, things that you've put interfacing on. So it is a good investment for your sewing in general. It's not like you're only gonna be able to use it for quilting. So grab one of those. I have an Amazon store and I will have some link there, but just make sure that it will fit your sewing machine. The other thing you need is thread. This is the color that I use for almost everything. This is Arafil, the number 2600. It's like a dove gray. And I use this way more than I use white or almost any other color because it's a good neutral that blends with a lot of things. And my backing is gray, so I'm going to be using this for my quilting. So pick a high quality thread. I like Arafil. There's a lot of great brands. Superior Threads, Metler, Guterman are all good ones too. But, um, I, and I also like 100% cotton. That doesn't mean that polyester or blend threads are bad. I just prefer 100% cotton. So whatever you use to piece your quilt, you should be good to go. Um, again, I don't want to get too picky about all those kind of details at this point. This is a great, um, you don't need this for your first quilt, but if, if you're one of those people who, as you're making this quilt, you're like, oh yeah, I love this. I am totally, I can't wait to get started on my next quilt. These are really inexpensive. They're only like $8. Again, they're in my Amazon store. They are super ugly, <laughs> but they're actually really helpful. So they have these little grippies and that helps you sort of move the quilt through your machine. This would be good for like a second quilt kind of thing. They're only, I think they're like eight bucks. Um, but I just wanted to share that with you because when I was learning how to quilt, I made a dozen quilts before I had them and it was a lifesaver to have those machine girths is what they're called. All right, so let's get started on quilting our patchwork quilt. I've got my walking foot already installed. So here's the idea of what we're gonna do. We're gonna start in the middle of the quilt. Okay, so find one of the middle seams. There's five seams, so if you're making the same size that I am, you can pick the one in the middle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the width of the presser foot to help us with our sizing. I'm not gonna teach you how to stitch in the ditch for this tutorial because I think stitch in the ditch is harder than what I'm gonna teach you how to do. So this is meant for your first quilt, the skit in your feet, wet, straight lines, it's not, you know, this is not hard. So we are going to use the width of the presser foot and we are going to line up the edge of the presser foot with our seam line. That way, all, that's all we have to follow. We're going to keep this left edge of our presser foot along the line all the way down the quilt. And then we will turn the quilt around and we'll come back up along this line. This is sort of like an echo quilting, so it's basically using a stitch or a line of your quilt and doing a stitch going out. And you could continue that for however many stitches you would like, um, but we're going to use the width of our presser foot. That way we don't have to mark it. We don't have to use any fancy tools. We're just going to be able to start sewing. If you did not put a fresh needle on when you were piecing your quilt, put a fresh needle on now. Trust me, you will thank me later. And the stitch um, you could bump up your stitch length to a two and a half or a three, depending on where it was. Um, I like my stitch a little longer, so I have mine set at a three, but your tension and everything else, you don't have to mess with any of that stuff when you're doing straight lines like this. Okay, right? now using, again, the seam line as our guide, I'm going to sew all the way down.
before you get too far, double check that um, your tension looks good. The stitch that you just made, as well as the back of your quilt looks good. Everything's looking good, and so then you can continue. So look, we're already down to the edge. Quilting this will take no time at all. So we're gonna go all the way off the edge. Then we're gonna flip the quilt around and we're gonna do the other side going back the opposite direction. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is so that if there is any kind of shifting, we don't have the whole quilt shifting in one direction. Um, it'll help to kind of keep everything a little bit more even. You can just sew down if you want. Don't even have to cut your thread. But you can if you want to. Now we're gonna sew back to the top. All right, see, that wasn't so bad, right? What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna do the exact same thing and I'm gonna go on all of those vertical seams. So I'm gonna come over here and do that one, this one, and then go the opposite direction. And then it will be time for us to go the horizontal direction. Same exact thing, okay? So that is how we're gonna quilt this guy. All right, everybody, so we have completed all of our vertical rows. Yay, we're all done. So now the quilt is stitched together enough that I'm gonna take my pins out. Um, they just they add a little bit of weight. There's more, they're more inclined to get stuck on things. So at this step, I'm gonna take mine out. I've got my little cup here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the exact same thing that we just did. I'm gonna start in the middle again. So pick a middle seam, work my way outward, and then we're pretty much done. That was not so bad, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and finish mine. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So here's where you would notice some issues if you are not using a walking foot. And even if you are using a walking foot, sometimes it can still give you trouble, but don't sweat it, okay? Because we're going back the other direction, you could have, um, where the the top of the fabric kind of ripples over that seam and I don't have an example if I if I get one by the time I finish this project I will show it to you but that's because of the layers shifting around a little bit so just to keep in mind if you see that happening on any of your intersections you're not crazy and you're not bad at this that is a common problem and that's going to get better with working on your quilts and figuring out how all of this works. Um, so if you see that happening, it's okay. I would recommend, you know, do a stitch here to here and just not go across those seams if that's really happening with you. All right, I'm going to finish up. Here it is. Can you see that? I'm going to show you the back also. Everything is quilted. Not too bad, right? I hope that you felt like that went easier than you thought. I know it can be really intimidating to get started with this step. So that's gonna be it for today's video. In the next video, I'm gonna have a quick video on how to trim it because it needs to be square and we need, there's a couple of tips when trimming um, your quilt step. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then I'll also show you how to start getting ready for your binding, which we'll do um, then in its own video. But I hope that that felt pretty good for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. In the description box will be all the links, my Amazon store, my blog, and all kinds of additional information to help you with this. If you guys are working on these, tag me on social media. Let me know how you're doing. You could contact me that way as well. So yeah, that's it for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.